Okay, so in today's lesson, we're going to talk about the fundamental principles of counting. And this all relates to probability, the topic that we're studying at the moment. The fundamental principle of counting is, I suppose, a quick and easy way to determine the number of outcomes of two or more events. So if you think about what we've been doing in class lately, we've been focusing on listing outcomes. And we've done this through three different methods. The first is systematic listing. And this is really when we just list our results in whatever order comes most natural to us. The second was our tree diagram. And this helped us visualize if the event, if our, or if an event happened two or three times over the different types of outcomes that would come from that. And our final one was two-way tables. And this method was great for if we had two different type of events. So say the coin being tossed and the dice been thrown to see what were our options in that case. All of these require listing, okay, and writing out the outcomes. But what if I just wanted to know, well, how many outcomes is there? That's when the fundamental principles of counting come through. Okay, here we have a six-sided dice or die, and it's rolled, and we also have a coin flipped, and so we have a euro here. And we are asked how many different outcomes are possible. The key word here first year is, is how many. Okay, so we're not asked to list the different outcomes. We're asked how many results would there be. The fundamental principle of counting states that if one event has n possibilities and the second event has n possibilities, then the total number of outcomes is n multiplied by n. And it sounds quite confusing, but it generally really isn't. So the event that we're talking about in this case, we have two events. We have rolling of the die and flipping the coin. So the rolling of the die, I can label M, and the flipping of the coin, I can label N. Okay, if we were to focus on the rolling of the dice, how many outcomes are possible here? Well, for rolling of the dice, I can get a one, a two, three, four, five, or six. So with this event, there are six possible outcomes. If we skip on to the next event, which is our coin toss, which is represented by N, there are two outcomes in this event, and they are heads or tails. So there are two outcomes. And the fundamental principle of counting just states that we multiply one event the outcomes of it by the second event. So m multiplied by n, so m was 6 and n was 2. And if we multiply them, I can tell you now that there are 12 outcomes. Now, if I was to list the outcomes, I definitely would use a two-way table here, but that's not the question we were asked. We were asked how many, and I've used the fundamental principle of counting to figure that out. Example 2 here, let's read together. A teacher puts labels on desks in an exam hall. Each desk is labelled with a vowel followed by a digit, example E7. How many different ways can the desks be labelled? Okay, so I have two events here. The first event is the vowels. Okay, and the second event is the digits. Okay, well, what are my options then for the first event? And that's the vowels. And my vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. So for my first event, the number of outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and this is going to be my M. And with the digits, this is going to be my N. And the options I can get here... Um, I can have a zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, and nine. So there are all the digits that can possibly happen. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten options there. And if I think back to my formula, it is M multiplied by n, and my m in this case is 5, and 5 multiplied by 10 will give me 
50 different ways I can rearrange those or 50 different ways that teacher can label those desks. Okay, let's have a look at our next example, example three. A car manufacturer makes three models of cars. A mini, which is this one here, a saloon, saloon has just got two doors, and an estate. These cars are available in five different colors, red, green, blue, brown, and orange. How many different cars are available? Again, they're asking the question, how many? So they're not asking us to list the outcomes. So there are two different events here. The first event is the type of car, okay? And that's event M. And in this case, there are three types of cars. The second event is the color that you can choose. So that is our N in this situation. And there are five different colors you can choose. And so our formula for the number of outcomes that are available is M multiplied by N, which is basically one event multiplied by the next event. And that is three multiplied by five. And so there are 15 different cars you can actually buy depending on your make and color. So there are 15 outcomes. Example four talks about a spinner. Here we have a spinner that is numbered two, four, six, and eight. It's four equal sections. The spinner is spun three times. So how many different outcomes are possible? Okay, so the three times stands for the three events. Okay, so event one, is the first spin. Event two is the second spin. And event three is when it's the third spin. Okay, when we talk about event one, we wanna know how many outcomes is possible. And when you spin this, there are four outcomes. When you spin it again, there are four outcomes the next time. You can still get two, four, six, or eight. And when you spin it the third time, there are still four outcomes. And so this is when we would try and calculate, well, how many different outcomes are possible? And the reality is the first event has four, the second event has four, and the third event has four. And the fundamental principle of counting says that we multiply the chances of each event. And so we go four fours are 16, and 16 multiplied by four is 64. And so there are 64 different outcomes when you spin this spinner three times. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the lesson. We're just gonna have a little learning check for tomorrow's class. And the questions I'm asking you is, what is the fundamental principle of counting? What is it? And the second one is why would we use this instead of listing out possible outcomes? What's the benefit of trying to do this instead of writing loads of lists? So those two, please, for tomorrow's class.